A mammogram is essentially just an x-ray picture of the breast. So the patient will come in and it's done a little bit differently than a chest x-ray because we need to use special equipment to get the picture just right. So the patient is placed in a compression device and x-rays are taken in two different planes for a screening mammogram. So we'll take them from top to bottom and then we take them from looking for sort of from inside to outside at sort of an angle. So as you can see on the screen we've got this is the top to bottom picture and this is from the side picture. So it gives us a way to look at the breast in two different angles to try to make sure that if we decide that the patient needs to come back that it's an actual real finding and not necessarily just a shadow. So, but it's, it's, it's a plain x-ray of the breast. Uh, the difference between say a chest x-ray and a mammogram is we use a lower radiation because the breast tissue is a little bit more sensitive than say the lung fields, so we use a different energy of x-ray beam. Well, screening mammogram is for the general public, so no, no symptoms, um, something to be done every year in order to try to catch something when it's small before it creates symptoms. A diagnostic mammogram is what we do when a patient either has symptoms such as nipple discharge, they feel um, an abnormal lump, or when they go for their screening mammogram and there's something on the picture that the radiologist sees and wants to get a better look at. So what happens is the patient will get notified that it's an exam that needs additional imaging and so then they'll come back and what happens is they return to the same mammography area and using the same equipment but some more specialized gear so to speak they may do what's called magnification views where they'll get a close-up image so that's usually done for things like abnormal calcifications or say a spot compression view or maybe a different angle than say the top to bottom or the side to side sometimes they'll want to take the breast and change its position and get a different x-ray from a different angle to try to make something that looks concerning in one view but not another to prove that it's indeed a shadow and not necessarily something to biopsy. So that's, that's the difference. The benefits for some patients is that some tumors, when they're caught before they cause symptoms, can be diagnosed at an earlier stage and treated. And what it at an earlier stage means to the general public is before it's spread to different tissues in your body. So the whole goal of screening mammography and what we're out here fighting for is to get that abnormal growth before it has a chance to invade your chest wall, to invade the lymphatic ducts that go to your skin, that go to the nipple, um, to get it when it's small and they can take out just a tiny piece versus taking out a large piece and making the woman cosmetically the way she might not want to be. So there are a lot of advantages both to um, catching when it's small for you know keeping the disease from spreading and basically you want the best cosmetic result as well if it's something that needs to come out. Because you know every woman it's something we all are concerned about is you know our appearance and there's a big difference in the post-operative look of a woman who had a tiny lumpectomy versus a mastectomy or a big piece of tissue that has to come out. So all of those things I think are advantages. Um, and there are some tumors that are aggressive. So despite how small they are when they're caught, they spread like wildfire. And then there are some tumors that are so slow growing that when they're caught, they may have never done anything to the patient. So there are some people that say that catching the tumor early doesn't help. So it's not 100% of the time. So radiologists aren't out there trying to say, well, this is 100% always guaranteed to stop disease progression. But it definitely gives us an advantage in the fight. Basically, we can find the lesion when it is smaller so that the piece of the breast that we take out is smaller. So it's better for the overall cosmetic effect of the woman. It's better because the smaller it is, the less of a chance that it's spread to the tissues surrounding it. So the chest wall, the skin, um, and essentially you can also catch it at an earlier stage so before the tumor has become more aggressive so all of those things are important well first of all once you get of age 
So never forget, once you're 40, regardless of whether you have symptoms, it's time to go get your first screening mammogram. Um, signs and symptoms, uh, an abnormal self breast exam. So women every month um, after their cycle should evaluate their breast tissue. Feel it in the shower, wherever is comfortable for you, same time of the month. If something feels different, if there's like a rock hard little pea type that's new, needs to go to the doctor to have the discussion, should we get this image with a mammogram or an ultrasound. Um, if there's skin thickening that's new, if the breast changes color, or if the patient develops nipple discharge, or any sort of change in the overlying skin, or if they notice that there's some lumpy, bumpy tissue in their armpit or axil, axilla, excuse me, which may suggest that there's enlarged lymph nodes. All of those things should be a red flag that, hey, maybe I need to get my breast looked at. So essentially the recommendation is if you have a first degree relative, from the age they were diagnosed with cancer, your screening mammography should begin 10 years prior to that. So the, the whole idea is that in patients with a family history of cancers that are more aggressive and start younger, the idea is if that, unfortunately, if that gene was passed to their daughter or their sister, that, that gives us a chance to catch that earlier. So that's the sort of the recommendations that are out there. I would tell that population that the vast majority of breast cancers occur in women who do not have a family history. And it does not pertain to whether it's an aggressive or slow growing cancer. Breast cancer by far the most, the most predictive thing of, of getting it is age and being female, there's other things delayed, um, like say you didn't have a child until after the age of 30. Um, so a lot of us, you know, who have careers don't have their first child until after, you know, they're in their 30s. That does increase your risk. Um, obesity, inactivity, things that make you at risk for other health problems also put you at risk for breast cancer. But by far and large, most breast cancers are the first ones in the family. So the, the recommendations for annual screening is because it's a relatively low risk, high benefit, low cost screening option that can, like we talked about, can, you know, catch cancers before they have a chance to really set in and then spread throughout the body. So that's what we're fighting for. Well, the people who read mammograms, I know here at Kahnema, all of us have gone through medical school, internship, residency in radiology. And then the American College of Radiology, in addition, requires that we get additional training specifically in mammography and on top of that, specifically in, dig in digital mammography. Um, so you have to have a certain number of hours of supervised mammography reads. So you can't just graduate residency and not have looked at a certain number of mammograms. You're required by law to have had almost a thousand mammograms under your belt, having looked at, supervised by somebody who's already trained, so that they make sure that you're qualified to interpret these studies. And specifically with digital mammography, you have to have a certain number of hours of reading the studies as well as what we call continuing medical education. So they want to make sure that people are up to date with the technology and are able to work with not just the films that you put up on the view box, but seeing the images like this on packs, being able to work the equipment, and all of those things are required by the college before you even get to read your first one on your own. So. And a lot of the people in our practice, you know, um, we're all board certif certified radiologists by the college, and there are people who've received fellowship training in mammography as well. Oh, we're very excited. I can't tell you how much of um, an asset I think digital is going to be for not just the patients coming in, but for us as radiologists. Um, one of the best things about working in a group like we do is that we have over 15 really smart, very excited people who love their jobs. And when I get a case that I find interesting, 
I, I'll call everybody around in the reading room, say, hey, will you come and look at this? But not only that, I can, you know, contact, you know, for example, Dr. Kasich or Dr. Shabra, who may be at one of our, you know, satellite imaging centers. Like, for example, we're here at the outpatient center today. But I can contact, you know, Dr. Shabra, who's down at the Lee campus. And with digital mammography, it gives us the opportunity. Everything is there on the centralized packs. So we can all look at the cases together. And more eyes means better diagnosis, means more minds working together to basically decide whether these images indicate, you know, this person needs to come back for diagnostic mammography or possibly a biopsy. Or you can have people all looking at it together and saying, no, I think that's okay. We can wait till next year. You have her get another study and see if it's a stable finding. So digital mammography is, is a real, it's a powerful tool because there's no longer these heavy jackets that can get lost with like tons of films and over, over time the films crumble. Everything is now on a computer. The patient doesn't have to carry anything with them. People at different sites have the opportunity to look at the pictures and it becomes also a storage bank. So as the woman comes back year after year with the click of a button, I can pull up her pictures from five years ago and if something's slow growing and all of a sudden catches my eye, I can pull up a picture and say, hey, that wasn't there versus digging through a folder which may or may not have the old picture in it. It makes a big difference and it, it also is good for the patient because it helps us go through the images in a more efficient fashion and then they get their reports faster. So there really is no downside to digital mammography, except for that it wasn't available sooner. That's in, in my honest opinion. It's better for women with dense breasts because we have the ability to make the image lighter or darker on the screen. Uh, it's better for really tiny calcifications, which can be a sign of cancer. So on the, on the packs, what we can do is we can actually use a magnification tool and mag those up like blow them up super size whereas before you had this like Sherlock Holmes magnification glass and you're looking at the film and you know it's technically superior and I think in pretty much every way it's going to be an asset to fighting breast cancer.